In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do input into a simple variable as well as a one dimensional array and a two dimensional array. Now, if you take a look at this code on the left hand side, we've already done our declarations. We've declared a simple variable marks and we've also declared an array. And if you take a look at the right hand side here, you can see that memories have been allocated for each of these declarations uh, for the variable marks as well as this array called num. So to do input, we can simply use the input instruction and we can specify the name of the variable where we want to do our input. So for as far as marks is con concerned, this is fairly straightforward. We write our instruction input and we write the name of our variable. So for example, when this instruction is executed, the user types in a value of 25, right? So if the user types in a value of 25, that value of 25 is going to be stored here at this memory location in our RAM. Okay, so what if after this instruction has been executed and a value of 25 has been saved here, what if once again we have another instruction that is an input instruction and we are doing the input into the same variable marks? What's going to happen to the previous value? For example, when the second instruction gets executed and the user types in a value of 40, what's going to happen to this value stored in memory location marks? Well, this old value is going to be overwritten by this new value. right? So the old value is gone now and this new value takes over the uh, previous value. Okay, this should be fairly straightforward for you to guess now. What if the next instruction says that give marks a value of 55? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to this value stored in memory location marks? Well, this, this value is going to be overwritten and the new value 55 is going to be stored here. So at a time, we can only store one value in this memory location. I hope the concept is clear. All right, but what if we want to do an input in our array, right? This array called num, what if we want to do our input here? Is this instruction going to work? Well, let's take a look. You're asking the CPU to do input into this memory location called num. So when the CPU goes here and it takes a look at this memory location num, it sees that this has in fact three different elements where we can store values. So the CPU is confused now because it doesn't know which one of these three elements, which one of these three places should it store the value at? Where should it store the value? So we are, we are giving uh, the CPU incomplete information as to where exactly that value needs to be stored. So we need to provide complete information to the CPU. We want to tell the CPU to do input in this memory location num, in this array num, and within brackets, we also need to tell the CPU as to which element within the array we want to do our input in. So here we are telling that we want to do our input in element number one. So let's assume that the user types in a value of uh, 70, for example, right? So then uh, this is the element that gets the value 70. So once this instruction has been executed, we move on to the next instruction. And you can see once again, we are asking the CPU to do our input in array num, but at which element? Element number two. So this time the input is going to go to element number two. Let's suppose that the user types in a value of 90. So this element number two is gonna get a value of 90. And finally, you know, this third instruction is getting executed. And once again, you know, we're telling the processor to go to this array num and in element number three, do an input. Let's assume the user types in a value of 100. So this time, this memory location is getting updated. So this is where we're storing the value. I hope this concept is clear. And for output, there isn't any th anything different that needs to be explained, you know. You can understand that we are telling the CPU to do output from memory location marks. So see, the CPU is going to memory location, go to memory location marks and output this value on the monitor, right? So when this instruction gets executed, you will see 55 being output on the screen. Then here, we are asking the processor to do its output 
by going to the location where this array num is stored and output the value stored in memory location 1. So this value is going to be picked and it's going to be output. Similarly for this instruction this value of 90 is going to be output and similarly for this instruction this value 100 is going to be output. Now the key concept that we've covered so far is that for arrays you need to be specific you not only need to give the name of the array but also specify the element number otherwise the process is going to be confused because you're providing incomplete information make sure you always provide the element number whenever you're dealing with arrays and now finally take a look at, let's take a look at uh, 2d arrays so we've done a declaration here we've declared a 2d array called score and on the right hand side here you can see that a memory has correspondingly been allocated for this array score so we have a two dimensional array here the concept for doing input in a two dimensional array is pretty similar um, you you can't do you can't do something like this and i hope you know by now you've understand uh, you you understand why you can't do something like this because you're asking the cpu to do input in this array score but when the cpu comes here it sees that score has many elements a value can be stored here or here or here there are in fact a total of nine different elements where values can be stored so how can the cpu be sure where to input and store the value so this information is not complete enough in fact something like this is perfect right because you're telling the cpu that you want to do input in this array called score and you want to do your input at row number one and column number one remember the first um, value is always the row value and the second one is always the column value so one one basically means row number one and column number one which would be this element and let's assume the user types in a value of 40 so we you know 40 gets stored here let's pick any one of these statements i'm not going to go through all of these because they're all similar let's pick this one right when this instruction is executed you're asking the cpu to do input in this array score at row 2 and column 3 which means what row 2 column 3 which would be this one and let's assume the user types in a value of 75 so this time 75 gets stored here I think the concept is very simple to understand and now um, maybe some of you who already understand how inputs are done in the array how we need to be using a loop in this that's something that we're going to be taking a look in the following video but in this video I hope you've understood the concept that to do input you need to provide the complete information the name of the array as well as in the two dimension in case of two dimensional array you need to mention the row and column number and you need to do that within brackets and the first one is always the row number and the second one is always the column number and finally for output statements we know we shouldn't be doing this because this is not going to work we are providing incomplete information right so this is not going to work but this one is fine so in this case um, you're asking the cpu to do output from the array called score and the element number is row one column one so in this case on your monitor screen uh, this value from this array score row one column one which would be this element is going to be output let's do another output let's say this one uh, so this time you're asking the cpu to go to array score uh, and from row two column two you're going to do the output so row two remember row always comes first column two so this would be 60 let's do one more and in this case you're asking the cpu to do output from array score row would be three and column would be two so output from score row three row 3 is going to be this one and column 2 is going to be this one right so it would be this value 90 which is going to be output on the screen so i have selectively only executed 
and shown you the output for these instructions obviously these also you know if they get executed their corresponding values are going to be output so I did not go through all of these instructions uh, but hopefully you understand uh, how things work and the input output concept when working with simple variables in one dimensional and two dimensional arrays is clear if you still have any questions do use the comment section